um, I just wanted to uh, do a quick video for you guys um, on how I edit my videos and the audio ready for upload um, and just kind of show you that process. So what I've done here is I've already dragged in the file that I'll be using but what I'll do is I'll show you drag it in here like this click replace so I know that this is the footage that I want to use so that's now in Final Cut Pro which is where I do all my, all my editing for videos um, and you can see that the video is importing there so that is helpful because um, I want that importing whilst I'm editing the audio just to save time try to be as efficient as possible with this kind of stuff um, there's a the tail end of the last video I did so let's get rid of that we don't want that on this video and um, start the video around here I can see that by the sound waves so let's get rid of everything before there and then this is where I do my little chatty section at the end so let's also lose everything after that and in between here delete delete um, and you can hopefully hear that as I scroll over you can hear the sound of everything so we won't be using this sound at all and now this video is um, importing to um, Final Cut Pro I'll go to Logic and I'll start editing the audio so because I'm doing this so you guys can hear what I'm doing I had to unplug my headphones because it's using the internal mic on the computer and as I'm using Logic to edit this I can't record through Logic as well which is a bit of a shame would have been nice to get slightly nicer sounding audio um, okay so you can see down here I've got loads of settings going on they're actually in place because I've already edited one of the other audio takes from another video um, so what I'm going to do is go to uh, preset and we want to start from scratch really so I always choose the natural one because the reverb is um, subtle on it um, let's keep this open and let's just remove these so you can see how I build it up so there we go, got all that clear now I've got a preset here that I've saved on top of this um, and I don't want any of this stuff here whilst I'm recording actually um, because it just takes up too much um, computer power CPU I believe it's called um, so I record everything without having anything in the settings over here and then once it's been recorded I uh, open up a preset and then use the settings that I've saved um, so let's have a quick listen. Hopefully this won't be too loud. Okay, so we can hear the audio, the recording worked fine. Um, what I want to do now is based on the input I've got on my microphone, all these set the settings I've got should be fine for um let's just pause this for a sec. Um, all the settings I've got should be fine for compression because I just want to take with this compression here I just want to take a couple of those spikes down um, just to uh, flatten the sound a little bit um, and then what I'll do here is just go and get another compressor and with this one I will watch this needle I don't really want it to be going above five here so I like the sound of this compressor here I don't know what it emulates um, in terms of compressors but um, when I listen I like the sound um, I also like to push the sound into the compressor a bit so we've got the makeup volume here um, or the makeup gain that kind of um, pushes the sound into the compressor a bit more and I've given myself loads of headroom over here the recording is coming in at nine, minus 20 I want to keep it below minus 18 and um, I've got the guitar and vocals coming through there, so I could probably allow it to go a bit higher, but it seems to work just fine, um, making sure that my gain is set so the recording volume is really low to start with. It means I've got lots of room to um, compress and um, do work on it so it sounds uh, more professional and clean and crisp. 
Um, so I set the release to auto, and then I just want to take this up so um, anything that does go through the compressor has a decent amount of reduction on it. Um, so if I play this now, so you can see it's minus 25 here. If I were, if I were doing um, a recording with multiple tracks, I would want to be matching this number here with this number over here so that the um, overall build up of all of the tracks together in the stereo output um, would still be falling probably probably somewhere um, but about minus eight to minus six around that kind of level um, and then that when I stop um, using the mastering software um, still gives me a bit of a headroom to be able to work with as I'm not doing that I'm just going to allow the compressor to stay up at this level but I'd usually turn this down to bring the output level out down as well um, so anyway so that works fine for me. Um, like I said, I don't want to compress it way too much. Um, I'll be doing a lot more in the mastering software. So usually you'd um, bounce this project out and you would in 24 bit and then you would master it in a separate um, file and then you would bounce that down into 16 bit so it was um, um, more appropriate to use for um, a bunch of different media. Um, okay so now I've got all this set up I've got the track marked out so it only plays within that frame I'm going to use Ozone 9, um, which I purchased and I'm really thankful that I did because it's such a good tool. Um, I start off by using the Master Assistant here. And what this does is it just listens to the audio that I'm playing through, because um, obviously this track here goes through the system and down through here. So it would hit the compressor first and then it will hit Ozone 9. Um, and this is just going to listen to it and see, make a few adjustments that it thinks um, would be appropriate. So let's see what it does. My love, oh my love, all of my kissing, you don't know how to bend this boy, when you're with me, oh boy, the world can see that you were the best, oh my love, I've been away to my therapy door, it's in my boy. Okay. So what it's done there is it's just added a little EQ to it based on what it can what's coming through. I've already cut loads of the low end out, so what it thinks it needs to do is boost the low end. It doesn't need to do that because we don't really want all of this stuff here playing acoustic guitar and singing, this area just isn't going to be filled. Um, you know, that's for bass and drums, really. Um, and then it's done a few adjustments here. Um, I'm now going to open something called uh, da -da -da -da, Tonal Balance Control. Now, this gives me a good visual representation of what's being produced. Um, set it to the uh, most appropriate settings for what I'm trying to achieve, which is a uh, the kind of sound people would expect to be getting from my kind of music. I mean, I guess I could go pop or rock, but they're they're all quite similar, to be honest. I've had a look through them. And I've put it on fine here, and what this is going to do is let me see the waveform, and hopefully it will fit nicely within these track marks here. Um, and I'm also going to get the equalizer from Ozone up in here and if I need to make any adjustments then I can um, so if I play it you'll be able to my see love, oh my love, all of my 
kissing you on board, you better listen, oh boy. When you're with me, oh boy, the world can see that. You can see here we might have slightly too much in the low bits here and also a bit too much in the highs here which for me is really um, helpful to be able to see. I don't have studio monitors, I just use headphones. Um, I've got a nice pair of um, Sennheiser um, Momentum headphones I believe they are. Um, I bought them years back but they're really great and they've got a fairly flat response. Um, but still, I've got it very close to my ears. I can't hear um, the kind of things I would be able to hear if I had some studio monitors set up properly in the space. So th it's good to have a visual representation of it so I can see exactly what's going on. Now, I've got a few things that I always add on here. Um, and I do this because, uh, let's make sure the maximizer is at the end. This is a limiter here to make sure that the sound doesn't go over a certain point. Um, so equalizer. I found that this preset here is ideal for my recordings because um, it allows the vocals to pop forwards a bit. Um, so in fact, I should have um, played it before adjusting any of the settings. See, you can hear the difference. I'm not sure if you will through these headphones, but let's give it a try. Let's um, just make this a bit wider so I can see what's going on. Can't the tower into that bit that I messed up there. There we go. Okay, so listen. All of my love, all of my kissing, you don't know what you've been missing for. Now, if I click when this, hopefully you'll hear the vocals pop out of it. The world can see that you were the best for me. So that's giving it a bit of a cleaner sound. The exciter um, and a bit of saturation to the sounds and sounds. Maybe with an old school recording, I'll um, just take the preset. It just gives the sound a bit of a fuller feel to it. And then I always use the images as well because what I want those vocals to really be present in this mix. So I'll take the slow end out to cover the way from going on there. So you can't really hear what's going on with uh, it just coming out of the uh, speakers on the computer. Um, but with the headphones on, it makes it quite clear when you make these adjustments that they are making a difference. Um, and now the final thing on here I will do is just make sure that this threshold is not set too low. And I don't want this going um, yeah, so that's good. Though. Still going to give it a bit of a a, a nice dynamic range, even though um, it has been compressed and it has been limited. Um, okay, so now let's have a look at the tonal balance over here. So this high end over here, let's push it down the top. So I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to see my bed tonight. All of my love, all of my kisses. You don't know what you've been. That can bring you into a more central range there. Maybe add another point here. Just bring that down. Nice, okay. Well, maybe we can do with some more up here now, make those adjustments. So, with no vocals, it's difficult to tell, so wait for those vocals to kick back in. We'll be able to make adjustments better. It starts appearing and sounds falling. You can hear my heart calling. Living love is everywhere. I'm going to see my bed tonight. Oh, my love. You don't know how to bear this no more. When you're 
So that is pretty good to me. I mean, this is the kind of bulk of the sound that I want to be heard anyway. Um, because uh, that's where the vocals are really going to pop through in these two areas here, and they look good to me. Um, okay, so now I've done that. Um, the sound is a bit um, empty because there's no reverb on it, or very little reverb on there. So what I like to do, this is a fast track, so really don't want too much pre-delay on there. I want the sound to be coming in straight after. And again, if you're recording to a click, then you would go and calculate the uh, distance between the um, recording and when the um, reverb kicks in, or the delay, or whatever it is that you're using. Um, I'm just going to extend the length just a bit so we've got um, slightly more presence from the reverb. And what I'll do here is adjust these EQ settings because we don't want any of the low end coming through, really. And the high end, we've already got lots of that going on, so let's not add any more to the mix. And I'm just going to solo the reverb out here. And whilst I'm playing, I'm going to boost a few bits and just see what sounds I like the most. Sounds a bit boxy there. Okay, so that's a good little space there. Let's bring that up and then make sure we've got a bit of high end in there. There we go, that just lightens it up a bit. So this is just the reverb as well, remember. So and I'm also gonna click option and drag that across to there. So we've got the same settings on both the reverbs. This is such a small amount of reverb and doesn't have too much of an impact, but it does make a difference. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is add some distortion to this reverb. Um, again, just to make it a bit fuller. So nothing too wild, just a light vocal distortion. You can already hear that uh, sound fuller and bigger. And it will have increased the volume as well. Now what I want to do is I want to find a way of merging this in. So this is with notes. We were somewhere in the middle of this. Maybe just below this. I've got some reverb on there, only a small amount just to make sure that it doesn't sound so empty um, and gives it a bit more shape. Um, we've got all of the settings sorted out, so I would now, especially with me trying to be as efficient as possible, be happy enough with that recording. So what I want to do is trim this up because I don't want to export all of it and I also want the audio recording available for people to listen to. So let's cut that first bit off and I guess that little strike at the end is always nice to have. So bring that back to there and I want to add um, a fade to fade into the track and fade out. Again just cleans this up a little bit. So let's make sure that I'm not fading into that first note. Oh, very close there. Where is it? There. So that's enough. Let's go to the end of the track as well. Da 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 da. I'm going to hit C on my keyboard. That takes the yellow bar away from the top, so it doesn't loop. Um, just listen to the end part here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, ideal for me. So let's fade all the way up to that last strike there. Okay, good. So now that track is ready to be bounced. So like I said before, if I were doing this uh, properly, properly, then I would be taking this out without using the mastering software on it, making sure that the uh, levels aren't so high that it's clipping or anything. I mean, I would do this in 24-bit, but I'm mastering within the same project. So let's take it out in 16-bit. Uh, dithering on here as well. That's what you have to use when you're bringing a file from a large size to um, um, re reducing the bit, the bit rate. Is that what you call it? Um, so every, every time you're doing a final bounce on the track, you need to do that. Um, okay, so this is called Oh Boy, and bounce. So we can see up here that the import to Final Cut Pro is, is complete which is very handy because what that allows me to do is um, start editing that and be able to um, share that as well as soon as I've finished doing the editing. So let's pop over here and make sure that we've got the beginning of the track ready for importing that audio software. <laughs> There we go, so that's that first mark there. When we import the audio, we're going to have to try and match this up with the um, video. Um, so, okay, so I've got Apple Music popping up there, which means the track has bounced. So let's go to uh, Finder. Masters. You see here, I've been a busy boy. Um, ba 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 ba. Oh boy. Let's drag that in here. Bring it as close to this as possible. Now, we need to match this audio up. So, where is that first part? About there. Let's link. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so not too much of an echo on that, which means it's pretty well aligned. Um, now, I've found recently that the videos are actually not um, the same length as the audio. You can see here that we're the audio track is finishing after the audio on the video. So what we need to do is go to custom settings over here, custom speed. We actually need to stretch this out so they both match up. Oh, almost did it in one. There we go, that's good. Now what that will have done is taken it out of the sync at the beginning. So just do this twice to try and Get it as neat as possible. And then I'll readjust at the end as well. Make sure that that's nice and just get it lined up. We want it to pretty much start straight away. Okay. And then let's go to the end again. See if we need to make any further adjustments. Just need to stretch out a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to take the audio down on this. Trust that what I've done is enough. Um, make a new clip so the audio and the the new audio and the video footage are one. So oh boy, save that. <laughs> Now we've got the new audio on there and the video. Footage. So you can see we're getting a bit of a lag on there. The computer's 
uh, well, probably too full of um, files right now. Okay, I've also got a little section where I do a talk at the end, so I need to find out where I'm doing that talking, which will be straight after the video. And I need to take the hey reverb off. Thank you very much for watching this video. Sounds weird. Holly, Holly. Oh boy, please, new video of this song and all of the other songs that I go on page. It's three pounds a month, single day. So, and check it out. See you next time. Okay. So I don't need to be too precise with this. It's going to jump in straight after the video. But I do need to bounce it out to make sure that audio quality is decent as well. So, oh boy, talk, bounce. So that will bounce a lot quicker than the other file. And what I also want to do is bring in the audio track for the end. So let's pop that there and bring that down to about 25. <coughs> Seems to be the best kind of volume for it. And then see the Apple icon bouncing around so that means this is ready. Let's drag this in and now we need to align this. Uh, with it being a shorter section I doubt I'll need to do the custom length thing. Okay. Let's match this up. How's that sound? Thank you very much for watching this video. Holly Holly. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so now we've got the new audio directly underneath. Let's just bring that down, maybe that long, and do the same this end. It doesn't have to be perfect, because I'll be trimming that afterwards. Okay, new clip. Oh boy, talk. Excellent. So now we're in a position where we can start um, changing the look of the video. Let's bring that down here. Um, okay. So let's see what we can do. Let's just bring this volume down for now so you can see what I'm doing and hear me. Um, so I personally like to use Lumikia. Um, it just instantly gives me more of the look that I'm after. Um, I really like the dark background, the contrast, the shape, shadows on the lighting. Um, I think normally you use this when you're using a green screen, um, but it just works for me. Um, and then what I'll also do, let me just get rid of this. Um, there are a few settings that I usually like to use. Um, so let's chuck this in here. Make sure that's highlighted so I can edit stuff over here. Okay, uh, so I like the way that this one makes the blue pop in the background. Um, but it might be that that's a bit too intense. Okay, I like that. I like it. Um, I've also been messing around with my camera settings recently. I can see this light flickering in the background, so I'm going to have to readjust them. Um, but I'm constantly working on things to try and improve the quality of the videos and make them look cooler. I mean, I've got a light that would be positioned right above me here, coming down, and a light over here that comes onto the guitar and just brings a bit of light onto my face over this side so I'm not in complete darkness um, and I've got blue lights on the back there as well hey guys thank um, so anyway I'm pretty happy with that I like it um, it maybe looks a little bit clean so maybe a bit of noise in there would be nice um, and I often use one of these so if I pause the video for a second what I can do is skirt over the top of this and it'll give me an idea of what it would look like. Um, it's nice to see if it changes the skin tone enough to make it worthwhile. Maybe my skin's a bit white in this one, this gives it a warmer glow. 
I think that looks quite cool. Um, desaturated. Yeah, I'm not so keen on that look with this. That was quite cool, but mm, maybe a bit too bold. It's quite nice, but maybe too dreamy. I don't like that one at all. Okay, well, let's pop this one on here anyway. And I know that these also contain a bit of noise in them, so. Okay, that looks nice as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to keep it. Um, now what I will do is I will copy that. Apple C. <laughs> click onto this section and paste those settings, those effects onto the video. Um, don't want to change the volume. Paste. And now we'll see that the talk section also has that same look. Um, okay, so now what I would use, or what I would have done before, is um, worked with this over here. I'm not sure what it's called, um, but it would allow me to zoom in and zoom out. But I've had comments from people saying that they would like to see the guitar and what I'm doing. Um, and with the camera lens that I use, um, I can't zoom in or zoom out, so I can't zoom out any further than I am um, with the fixed lens that I've got. Um, so if I zoom in at all, using the techniques on here that I could use, then I'd end up not getting the guitar in the frame and people want to see that. So nowadays, I'm just leaving it so you can see me as though you were sat in front of me watching this at a gig. Um, well, I mean, you'd be really close, mind you, but you get the idea. You can see the guitar the whole time and you can see me as well. Um, so that stays there. This part, I think I'm slightly off center. <laughs> So I'll find a, my kind of standard position. Which is probably about here. Um, and I'm just going to get horizons up. Show horizon. Um, and I will just open this up a bit. And move myself across. So I'm more in the center of the frame. Um, also kind of cut out any of that top stuff where my head maybe too much in the middle there we go so that stays pretty central the whole way through cool let's get rid of those lines <clears throat> okay so now what we need to do is transition through from the this track into the audio And as I strike down on the strings in the video, it should match up with the audio that starts afterwards. So I want to bring this one over that, and I want to bring this to the beginning of the song. So about there. Hopefully this will work. You can see them lining up there. Let's bring this back up to full volume. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. Okay, good. <laughs> so I've got me shuffling around at the beginning there, so let's bring that a bit closer. And then make yes. sure the fade in doesn't cover that first bit. Go yep. to see if that's a nice time after the song. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Holy holy. Oh, boy. Just a little bit later, maybe. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Okay, holy that's holly. cool. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What a that. tune! Uh, okay, and, and then make sure this song finishes. Get out. See you next time. Okay, nice part to finish the song on. Take that over there so that all fades out as well. Make sure it's doing a nice job of the audio. Okay, so that's it. Done. Now, of course, I don't just upload this to my Patreon page. 
I put a shorter version available for people on social media platforms and on YouTube. So um, I'll copy all of this and then I'll open up the templates I've got for YouTube. I'll have to clear some files off this computer, I think. Okay, paste that at the beginning. And drag all of this back. Remove the other video that I was edit editing. Um, and then, as the song pretty much starts straight away, I probably start from the very beginning, and I want a minute of this. So, with it being such a short song, it doesn't seem to take too much away from it. But on the YouTube one, that's that's fine around there. I need to drag this one out, if it'll let me, to match up with the end here. Oh, I want to highlight, there we go. Good, and none of this stuff has to be perfect. And I also want to change the title of the song. Oh boy, by Buddy Holly. Okay, and I will highlight that, copy it, and I do a version for Ultimate Guitar. It has to be one minute exactly, this one. So let's just change the um, title there for the video. Go back into the YouTube one, and as I've already trimmed the song down, to one minute or thereabouts. I'll copy that, go back into here, take to the front. Let's just get rid of that and make it a bit smaller so we can see what's going on. Drag that to the front of the video. Remove the other song. Okay, and I just need to make sure that this is exactly one minute anymore and it won't let me upload it. Perfect. Okay, so we've got it. That's all three versions. So just go back to the main one. Um, I want to do this one first because um, I want to be able to make a thumbnail for the video and it takes longest to do this one. So share the master file. I want the highest quality I can get for the YouTube videos. So next, type in oh boy and I will copy that as well because I'm going to be using that a lot. Okay so that is now sharing, exporting that video. Good good good. Go into the YouTube one share master file and save so now we'll have all three of these exporting at the same time uh, with this one I have to share it using Apple devices 4k I'm still trying to get the largest possible or highest possible quality um, but the if the file size is too big it also won't upload um, so this one I have found is the best quality I can get. So oh boy for Ultimate Guitar, save. Okay, so now they're exporting. Let's just go into here and close this so we've not got too much going on on my computer. Save that. And this has to stay open because it's exporting. So I'm just going to go into Canva. Now Canva is where I just um, edit the thumbnails. Oh, yeah, you have to click on that once, I think. Yeah, it's open to it. And whilst I'm waiting for that video to export, let's just get the thumbnail started. So change that to Oh Boy bit large there so let's move that down okay and then I'm right at the top there good 
So now that is ready to be uh, have the new image placed on it. Let's do the same for the um, thumbnail that I use on Instagram. So double click there, paste. I'm slightly too large for that too. Just bring it down to a good size. Drag that across on that central. Oh, where's that line? There it is. Okay, and you can see at the top of my screen there that the um, main video has now finished exporting. So that's good. Let's just change the title of this. Okay, let's go to this video. Here it is down here. So we'll open this in QuickTime. Full screen. Probably not the best uh, image to use on my thumbnail. So let's just really quickly gloss through here, see if any of these images are good. I'll often use one where I'm putting some kind of silly face that isn't too ugly uh, from this section here. Um, just because on YouTube you want your video thumbnails to stand out, uh, maybe look a little bit different or So I feel like something like that would be ideal for YouTube. But, you know, there are no uh, rules with this, and who knows? It's very difficult when you look at yourself, because uh, I don't think I see myself the same way other people see me. I guess I could do a smiling one. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny looking at yourself in slow motion. Let's see what we've got here. I can use the cursor to go slowly. <laughs> uh, a little bit of a smirk with this. Looks like I'm saying, oh boy, maybe that's a... There we go, maybe something like that will do. Bit of a smile, slightly... Uh, uh, let's close that up there. Maybe it's engaging. Anyway, who knows? I'm going for it. So I'm going to screenshot that. Let's go back into Canva. I need to upload the image. Desktop. See how many screenshots I've taken for all the videos. Cool. Yeah, so I want a kind of animated image so it um, catches people's attention. Um, and these show up so small on a computer screen that I tr try not to take too much time over it and be too concerned with it. So let's push that back. In the mix, so it's in the correct place, and that's ready to download. Excellent. Download. Let's go to the YouTube thumbnail. Download it, that's good. Let's pop this back in the mix. There we go. Download. Okie dokie. So now that I've got my thumbnail sorted, I want to go to YouTube um, because the videos have started to um, complete with their export. So create new, upload a video file. Select a file. Um, where are they? Oh boy. Let's do this big one first. 
make sure the title's clear on here so I'm not lost when I go back into YouTube to make any um, additions to what I've done here. Um, upload thumbnail. Um, do, 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 downloads. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, boy. Boom. And now it is not for children. Okay, so for now, that's all I need to do. Let's go through here and upload as unlisted. Because it is not ready to be released yet. So close that and let's get the YouTube version uploaded as well. And let's do the same thing. So documents, shots, over a YouTube short. Okay. So that I boy. We've already got a thumbnail, so I'm just going to get that. Um, let's go down that just now. Okay, and this one will be going on playlists. Um, it is for 60s Sunday, so let's get on there as well. No, not made for kids. Okay, so again, because it's not being released yet, um, we can do that, just import some end screens so people can find new videos afterwards. And cards. Never used to let you do this. Um, Now, what was last week's? That's the Every Brothers. There we go. So, put a similar video up there so people can watch that if they so wish. A little bit in. Save. Okay, so I haven't put any tags on this video or anything like that, which oh, these days I find I don't even have time to go back in and um, add them afterwards. But that's something that's really important as well for people to be able to find your videos. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, what I'll do now is I'll um, go to the video and I'll make sure that it's on my phone as well. So I don't need the full version on my phone, but I do need this version because it's what will go on YouTube, um, on uh, Instagram. And I'll share all the others from uh, YouTube um, onto Facebook and Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I did do TikTok for a while, but um, it was just too much work trying to upload to every single website every single day. Uh, so I'll probably do a bulk upload at some point to TikTok. Okay, so that's now sent. And I also want to put on my phone the thumbnail. So there's the IG one. Airdrop that. So then when it's ready for release, I have things on my phone as well as on my computer in case I can't make it back to my computer in order to um, upload the videos. Uh, let's do this one as well. Because over the weekend, it's likely that I won't be able to get into my studio to be able to upload, so I'll have to do it from my phone. Um, okay, so that is it, guys. Um, not too lengthy a process, but... With a video every day, that time soon adds up. Um, and what I'll do is, uh, when the video is due to be released, I'll um, upload it to all the appropriate websites. Um, but what I will also do now is I'll go into Patreon and I'll schedule the post so it's ready to come out at 7am on Sunday morning. Um, and yeah, just trying to get ahead of myself and make sure that I'm not snow snowed under um, that... If I'm not feeling well or something, that I have to sit down and record a video. Um, sometimes that's not ideal. Or, you know, there's things going on with uh, the girls needing to go to clubs or birthday parties and stuff. So I just don't have the time to be able to get into the studio as well. Uh, but anyway, I think, I think that summarises it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and found it um, informative. And uh, I'll see you on a video sometime soon. Take care.